even the shores of Africa. It is an absolute privilege for me to be here. Absolute privilege. And also to be working with my long-term friends, um, Mark and Ernestine Finley, who are doing such tremendous work around the world. So I'm just privileged to be here. I bring you greetings from the UK, from Great Britain. Anybody been to Great Britain? Well, you're privileged to be here. Let me tell you that, because we don't have the weather that you have. We're absolutely, it's always raining. So when, when, when I said I was coming to Kenya, they said to me, can you take us with you? Sadly, I couldn't, but it's so great for us to be, or for me to be here. Um, look, I'm going to be talking to you throughout these two weeks about how to reverse diseases. That has been my passion since I was a, a very young man and how to reverse things like diabetes, high blood pressure, all of these ailments that we feel we have to live with. But before we do that, because this is a health event, I'm going to need everybody to stand for me. Everybody stand. Those people watching online, I need you to stand as well. Yes, you think I can't see you. I can see you. Everybody needs to stand. Very good. So that's good. You've You've passed the first test, you can actually stand. Now, what I now want to do is ask you a few questions. If you can say yes to the questions, stay standing. If no, sit down. Simple, right? So, first question. First question. If you've been able to drink at least one liter of water every day of this week, Stay standing. If not, sit down. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay, next question. You're going to need to listen. You're going to need to listen. Next question. If you've been able to eat somewhere between five and ten portions of fruit and vegetables, each day, stay standing. <laughs> oh, am, am, am I in the right place? This is a health event, right? Are there any people? Oh, there are a few standing. Okay. For those still standing, for those still standing, if you've been able to sleep Anywhere between six and eight hours each night, stay standing. If not, sit down. I'm seeing some people starting to stand up. What's all this about? I don't understand that. Right. Okay. Okay, I'm going to get you on this one. For those still standing, if you've been able to exercise, yes, exercise, half an hour, each day, stay standing. If not, sit down. Okay, thank you very much. So, for the remaining people still standing, my last question is this. You have to listen carefully. How long have you had a problem telling the truth? <laughs> no. No, I don't, I don't mean it. Give them a round of applause, please. Give them a round of applause. Very good. Very good. Because if you've been able to do that with your life, you are building absolute quality building blocks for your life, not just your life, but for the people around you. Okay, as I said, my name is Dr. Chitty. People need to know how they can get in contact with me. If you're on Instagram and Twitter, you can follow, you can see some of the things I do. Now, one of the programs I have, it is called Life Colors. So Life Colors is really giving a color to every single disease that we try to reverse. So we go through a purple color, a green color, a red color. But today, I'm going to join two colors. I'm going to do the blue and the purple, diabetes and obesity. Let's call it diabetes, shall we? Diabetes. Because diabetes is really close to my heart. My father, sadly, had type 2 diabetes. He had so many strokes and he died way too early. I was unable to help him at the time. This was many years ago. But 
I was determined that I would help everybody who has type 2 diabetes. And let me say this in the outset. Type 2 diabetes, nobody has to live with. Nobody has to live with. Now, if you want to challenge me on that, you can privately, but the evidence is clear. Nobody needs to live with it. It is a lifestyle disease, and with our lifestyles, we can get rid of it. it there is a human cost to diabetes. I don't know if you know that half of the people who lose their sight globally is because of diabetes. Half of the people who need amputations, it's because of diabetes. Half of the people who lose the function of their kidneys, it's because of type 2 diabetes. Diabetes affects every single cell in the body. You cannot escape. It's not a mild disease, it's a very serious one. Now, when you track the history of diabetes, we find that somewhere in the mid-90s, it just suddenly took off. And it was mirrored by the increase in obesity. Because often diabetes and obesity go together. And a lot of that was due to the consumption of lots of these sugary drinks with high fructose corn syrup. These things are absolutely detrimental, and we'll talk a bit more about them later. But let me take you back nearly 100 years, back to 1932, and a great doctor by the name of H.P. Hemsworth wanted to find out why people get diabetes. That's a good question. Nobody asked that question before. So he, he went around the world, and he said, well, what are the people eating around the world? And he looked at it. He went to Japan, and Italy, and Holland, and the USA, and England. And he made this chart, and the, the dark columns represent the carbohydrate in the diet. The light columns represent the fat in the diet. And that line going diagonally down is the rate of diabetes, or the presence of diabetes. Now, I know you're all very bright. So what do you see in that graph? Let me, let me help you. It says that the more carbohydrate you eat, the lower your risk of type 2 diabetes. Does that make sense? But surely we're told, the more carbohydrate you eat, the more diabetes you get. In Japan, you can see that they eat lots of carbohydrate, but they have low levels of diabetes. How can this be? Well, the truth is that carbohydrates are not all bad. Did you know that vegetables are carbohydrates? Fruits are carbohydrates. Grains and seeds, they're carbohydrates. That's what they're eating in Japan. The other ones that we know about, the chocolate, the biscuits, the cakes, the refined sugars, they're the ones that cause type 2 diabetes. So what we need to do, it seems, we need to eat more of the simple, whole foods. Now, I have a, um, a video. There's no sound to it, but it just kind of shows you how diabetes works, if all of you can see that. See, what happens is when we consume sugar, we break it down into its simple components, and it goes into the bloodstream. At, as the bloodstream absorbs all of this sugar, it needs insulin to take the blood, to take the sugar out of the blood, or to allow the sugar to get into the cells. And all your organs need sugar to survive, so sugar needs to come into the cell. In fact, let me tell you this. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this question. Has anybody ever played the game Knock Down Ginger? Knock Down Ginger. I knew nobody has done this. Well, maybe they call it something different here. When I was a youth, sorry pastors, I'm confessing to you. When I was a youth, we used to play this game Knock Down Ginger. It's where you knock on the door of somebody's house and run away. <laughs> okay, I can hear some laughs. That means confession. That means confession. Now, this kind of tells me a bit of what diabetes is like. You see, when I played Knock Down Ginger, I would knock on the door, run away. Somebody would open the door. I'm not there, they'd close the door. But then I would come back and knock on the same door. 
and I'd do it three or four times. After the fourth time, nobody opens the door because they think I was just a, a child playing around. That's a bit like diabetes. You see, in order for sugar to get into the cell to be used for energy, insulin has to be released to knock on the door of the cell. So every time you eat something sweet, all of that sugar goes in the, in the bloodstream and the body says, no, 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 we can't have all of this. Put it into the cell. Get insulin to knock on the door of the cell. Well, after years of knocking on the door, several times a day, the cell says, I'm not opening anymore. I'm not opening. That's when we get insulin resistance. The cells don't open, blood sugar builds up, and it causes so much damage throughout the body. This is not the same as type 1 diabetes. So type 1 diabetes is when we just cannot make enough insulin. Usually, and we'll talk about this later in the couple of weeks, usually because of an autoimmune attack. Autoimmunity is like all of these diseases, thyroid disease, arthritis. It destroys the pancreas. You cannot make insulin anymore. So that's not the same. It has a different cause. Now, here's my question. What's so great about the Western diet? I've just come back, actually. Two weeks ago, I just came back from the Ivory Coast. And I have been telling them exactly what I'm going to tell you, that the Western diet is not something we should be chasing after. It is the diet that we should be running away from. We have, you know, Africa, the continent of Africa, is the richest continent. You know that, right? With just minerals and gems and all of that. That's true, but we also produce so much food. Good, whole food. But instead, we don't pick it from our gardens. What we do, we just wait for the, the McDonald's and the KFC and all of that to come, and then we get all of the Western diseases. The Western diet is so full of fat and sugar and salt and protein, very low in fiber, very low in nutrients. And we, we can thank this man. You know, we all know this man, right? No? Okay, well, you know his company. You know this, right? Is there anybody who's never heard of this company? Let me see your hand. Okay. Is there a McDonald's in Kenya? No, I don't think so. There's not many McDonald's in Nigeria either. But I've been told that McDonald's is coming to Africa quite soon. And when it comes, and all the changes that take place, we'll say, oh, I wonder why I'm now putting on weight. It's not because of our genes or our hormones, it's because of what we are actually consuming. But why is the Western diet so addictive? Why? I mean, I think you can find the answer in the animal kingdom. Now, who can tell me something interesting about a shark? Can you tell me something interesting about a shark? Yeah, they don't sleep, they keep moving, absolutely. Let me tell you one thing interesting, you may already know. A shark can smell one drop of blood one kilometer away. One drop of blood one kilometer away. How can it do that? Why does it do that? Well, it's because animals are designed... Look, if a shark smells blood, what's it smelling? It's smelling an injured fish. So that's like fast food for a shark. Easy. Easy food. I don't have to chase it. It's going to be wounded. So it's programmed to go after it. Our bodies are like that too. We are programmed to try to save energy or conserve energy. So we want then to eat foods that are high in energy. If you give somebody sugar, they want more sugar. Our brains are wired that way. In fact, the wiring of our brain when you take sugar is just like taking heroin or any very addictive drug. It's very difficult to get rid of. In fact, they did some experiments with some rats. Rats are very much like humans. You may know this. So they did some experiments with rats, and they fed them complete sugar as much as they wanted to eat. What do you think happened to them? They could eat as much sugar as they wanted, and that was all they could eat. What do you think happened? No, they didn't, they didn't die, they didn't get overweight. They ate as much sugar as they wanted, and then they stopped. They were fine. Then they gave them pure fat to eat. The same thing happened. They ate as much fat as they wanted, and then they stopped. 
But when they had the combination of 50% fat, 50% sugar, and they put them together, those rats could not stop eating, and they died from obesity. There's something about the combination of fat and sugar that makes it so addictive. And where do we find that? We find it in all the cakes and the biscuits and the ice creams, all of those things that are addictive, right? You know, I've never heard somebody say, you know, if I eat one apple, I have to eat the whole bag of apples. It's never happened. But if I have one chocolate, I have to eat everything and then go for more. So we are addicted. We, we're programmed sometimes. If, we, if we're exposed to that refined sugar, we'll want even more. Obesity is killing more people than starvation in the world today. That is the sad thing. We're coming up with all sorts of drugs to kind of combat this, but the drugs are not the answer. It's a whole food, plant-based diet. Obesity, I, th I think, is very simple. I don't know any of you who did physics when you were at school. It's very simple. Because I get people say to me, Dr. Chiddy, I only eat one lettuce leaf a day, and I don't understand how I've put on so much weight. Well, that would obviously break the laws of physics. You know, the matter cannot be created or destroyed. You cannot create fat out of nothing. So sometimes we just underestimate what we're eating. And we have to really keep a track on that. If we eat more calories than we burn up, we will get overweight. OK. People say to me, well, I eat the same as when I was in my teenage years. Yes, that's the problem, but you're not moving as much as when you were a teenager. So now you're getting the problem of the middle years. I call them the middle years because they happen in the middle of our lives, but also they make our middle a little bit bigger. OK, let me ask you this question. Can you be fit and fat? Is that possible? OK, so let me see the people who say, yes, let me see your hands. Yes, you can be fit and fat. Let me see your hands and at home. OK. OK, how many people say, no, you cannot be fit and fat? Put your hands up. Right. So the majority of the people are so unfit that they can't even put their hands up. That's, that's what I'm seeing. Wow. We've got some work to do here. We've got some work to do. But look, the truth is you can be fit and fat. It's possible. There are, there are overweight people whose blood sugar, blood pressure is absolutely fantastic. They can run marathons. You know, you may have seen them on the marathons. They're running marathons. But the problem is it can never last. It can never last. The body has to do so much work to make you fit if you're overweight that when you get to your 60s and 70s, it just says, I'm sorry, I have to give up. So yes, you can do it for a short period, but you cannot do it for life. If you go down to Loma Linda and you see all those people who are 105, 104. I met a woman who was 104. She drove me around in Loma Linda. You know, she, in fact, she walked me around, and I found it difficult to keep up with her. None of those people are overweight. They don't make it that far. So yes, you can be fit and fat, but not for a long term. So take it as a warning. There's something we need to do. Because at the heart of all of these diseases is this lack of self-control. And we need to learn how to reverse these diseases. Are you interested in knowing exactly how you reverse diabetes? Anybody interested? OK. Three people are interested. OK, more, more, good. Because okay, that's what we're here for. We're here to give you a few tips on how to reverse. This is not the whole story. And I suggest you don't try and do this just on your own. But these things work. I've been reversing diabetes for over 20 years. Very rarely have we had somebody who we couldn't reverse. But these are some of the principles that we use to help them reverse and to make those cells insulin sensitive again. Here's the first thing. What you need to do is eliminate all of the refined sugars, all the simple sugars. That means getting rid of all those biscuits and cakes and chocolates. Don't go into the shops with and where it says, OK, this is diabetic ice cream. This is diabetic jam. This is diabetic. Uh, no. The, the clue is in the name. This diabetic jam is to keep you a diabetic. Right? So you need to just put it all away. 
get rid of all the... And look, I've also said get rid of juices and alcohol, obviously. Those are some of the most refined sugars. When people ask me, I say, you're better off drinking, eating a donut than having grape juice, because that sugar goes straight into your system, causes those insulin spikes, and makes the problem worse. The next thing I say is cut out all of the white stuff. This is not a racist comment, folks. I'm not being racist. I'm saying get rid of the white rice and the white bread and the white pasta. You know, I know we eat white rice quite a lot on this continent. But if you're a diabetic or you're sensitive, when you have a spoonful of white rice, it is like having a spoonful of sugar. It is so simple that it's so refined. Have whole grain rice, have brown rice, red rice, black rice, but just not the white stuff. Okay. In fact, one thing I tend to tell people is, for the first two weeks, eat only greens, beans, and vegetables. Right? That's it. Green and only drink water for two weeks. Greens, beans, and vegetables. People ask me, what about fruit? Greens, beans, and vegetables. What about rice? Greens, beans, and vegetables. I know someone's going to ask me the same question. But what that does, it allows your cells to not need so much insulin. So then your cells quite quickly start desiring insulin. They become more sensitive again. And believe me, often within two weeks, people can reverse their type 2 diabetes, which they've had for decades. You say and you think that I'm I'm talking out the top of my head. No, absolutely, it works. And there are many people who can testify to it. I must have done hundreds, if not thousands of people. Okay. Now, I can hear what you're saying to yourselves. That sounds good. But you know what? I like my chocolate. I like my biscuits. It's going to be hard for me to give up. It's all right for you, Dr. Chitty, but I'm, I have a problem. Well, it's not all right for me. Let me tell you, for most of my life, I've had a sugar addiction. For most of my life. And I would say probably worse than anybody here and anybody online. You may not believe it. Let me give you an example. There was one time my mother came to stay with me. She knows my problem, but she bought this huge cake, a huge cake to my house. And I said, Mum, look, you know, you know my problem. If you give me this cake, I'm going to consume it. She said, oh, you know, just take a little bit every now and again. I said, please, just put it away somewhere that I can't see it. She put it in the fridge. All day, I'm thinking about the cake. <laughs> I go to bed. I'm lying on my bed, thinking about the cake. I can't sleep. I said, well, how am I going to get to sleep? I had a bright idea. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go downstairs and have a look at the cake. And then maybe by looking at the cake, it can satisfy me. I go down, I look at the cake. Well, maybe if I have a, a very thin slice. I think you know what happened. By the end of the night, I finished the cake. <laughs> and I blamed my mother. So I have a, an addiction, so I know how difficult it is. So I've got some help for you. Do you need some help with your addiction? Yes, you do. So I've got some help. It's called the Dr. Chitty Method, named after some doctor. I don't know who. But yes, Dr. Chitty Method, it says this. Look, if you have this addiction for sugar, the worst thing you can do is say, I must not have the cake. That's the worst thing you can do. Because your brain, like a child, when it's told that it can't have something, it wants it even more. You know that, right? Oh, I can't have the chocolate. You finish the whole thing. The best thing to do is to say, hmm, I will have the cake, but I will have it in half an hour. Even I can wait half an hour. At the same time, eat something like an apple. You eat the apple, you digest the apple slowly, it releases sugar slowly into your system. After half an hour, you have enough sugar in your system to help you overcome that desire for the cake. I can see what you're thinking. After half an hour and an apple, I still want the cake. Well, look, if you still feel like that, 
do the Dr. Chitty method again. Maybe you'll eat five apples in a day. That's good because most of you didn't had to sit down when I said if you could eat five fruit and vegetables. Okay, sometimes you may fail at the Dr. Chitty method, but I guarantee you will fail less frequently than if you try to just avoid it. So the reason why it's called the Dr. Chitty method, by the way, is because it stands for something. It stands for don't resist it, choose to have it, but delay it. Don't resist, choose to have it, but delay it. It helps us to overcome those desires. Something else that can help us overcome the desires, but for this I need a, I need a victim. I mean a volunteer, a volunteer, volunteer. No, no, no volunteer. Yes, come, come forward, yes. Pastor, thank you. Thank you for being such a volunteer. So right, so people need help overcoming this desire for sugar. And I want to show you an experiment. So if you had to eat four apples in two minutes, very quickly, really have to get them down. Which apples would you choose? Would you choose those golden delicious ones? Or would you choose the Granny Smith ones? The golden delicious. You would choose the golden delicious. Who would agree? Who would choose the golden delicious? Who, who would choose the golden delicious? Okay. Who would, choose the, who would choose these ones, the Granny Smith ones? Okay, there's always some strange people in the audience. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. That's right. great. Thank you, you so much. My apples? <laughs> after, after. Now, look, the reason why most people would choose the Golden Delicious is because they're sweeter. If you try the, the Granny Smith apples, they're quite sharp. They're very tangy. And what that does, actually, that tang suppresses much of our appetite. If you eat something, let's say you started eating your donuts and you eat something sour, it stops you wanting to eat something sugary. Also, if you break it up with something bitter, it will also stop you from wanting to eat something sugary. You know, what I say is bitter is better and sour has power. But let me now conclude on how to help people reverse diabetes. The next thing you need to do is limit yourself to two meals per day. I, I read this years ago in Ministry of Healing when I was a youngster that the optimum is to have two meals a day and it's absolutely right. It allows you to have a fast during the day and a fast during the night. That lowers your blood sugar. You must be drinking only water. People say to me, look, um, well I tell people immediately after a meal you must go for a walk. That allows your muscles to absorb all of that excess sugar. And some people say, well, Dr. Chitty, I have bought myself a dog so that I go for a walk every single day. That's a good thing. But if you do that, make sure you do the walking with it. Now, you can't be driving and walking at the same time. That doesn't work. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on. There's something I always say, beware of CCTV. Do you have that here, CCTV? Closed circuit television? Well, in Britain, I think we're the, one of the most monitored countries in the planet. We have lots of closed circuit television, but this CCTV is different. This is designed to keep you seated, and it stands for the car, the couch, and the TV. These things keep us seated all the time. Just by standing more during your day, you can burn up so many calories. You don't even have to go to the gym. Just stand. In my house, I have a standing desk, so most of the day I'm burning up calories without even thinking about it. Look, this, this is bringing me to the end of the, the program. Um, what I will say to you is this. What I've talked about is a lot of self-control. Self-control. There's a proverb, well, Proverbs 16, 32 says, better a patient man than a warrior. One who has self-control than one who takes a city. At the heart of many of our problems with diet, it's about self-control. In fact, I'll tell you something. The man who has self-control can take the city. You can't do it unless you have self-control. If you have a goal to go anywhere in life, you're going to have to restrict some of those desires that you have. So, 
we started a journey on health. We're going to do it right the way through the next two weeks. I'm going to be doing it with um, Sister Finley. And we hope that by the end of it, you'll all be standing when I say you've had five to ten fruits and vegetables, drinking your water, doing your exercise, and getting enough rest. But until then, I will see you soon. It's been a priv privilege and a pleasure to be here. Have a great rest of your Sabbath. Amen. Oh, I go this way. <laughs> <laughs>